I got all the notifications that were there, so I think we are. Okay, cool. Yeah, maybe all right. just double, double check, but yeah. yeah, I see people coming on. I'm also getting a bit of an echo from you. Let it fix itself. Okay. 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 All right, everybody. Everybody's welcome, right welcome. Right Happy Tuesday. Get it? Two. A lot of twos in today's date. By the way, that's, a, uh, that's an Aaliyah Ferdman original. So that did not come from me. Um, I did learn something very interesting that I will share with you guys who are here early. This was kind of cool. It's um, today's date, Tuesday 22nd, February 22, will be both a palindrome and an ambigram. Now, some What's an ambigram? Like, what the hell's a palindrome and what the hell's an ambigram? I will tell you. Uh, the date will read the same from left to right and from right to left, and upside down. Huh. How cool is that? It, I didn't know what an ambigram was. Yeah, so uh, pretty cool. Yeah, it's saying that it, I'm still sounding pretty echoey, but uh, it might be, I don't know, something probably on guys. I'll meet up when you're talking. Okay. Um, so anyway, very, very cool day today. Uh, for those that have not been around us for very long, I will just let you know that mine and my brother's number that we've been seeing for decades at this point has always been 222. Two, two, two. We see it everywhere. It's kind of been like our guiding number. Um, and then I, I shared this yesterday on a summit that we did, but my daughter was actually supposed to be born in um, mid-March. And I said to my wife, watch she's going to be born on 222 and my wife's like are you crazy that's like weeks ahead like that's not happening and 221 she nudges me she goes i think you're going to get your wish and sure enough our daughter was born on 222 so uh it's a special day in my heart and um so happy tuesday welcome for those of you that this is your first time here with us on um on our tuesday lives Welcome to our community, first and foremost, Old Souls and Seekers. Uh, this community is growing quickly. I don't even know what we're up to now. 25,000, 25, I think, today, actually. 25,000 people today. Bueno. Amazing. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's been growing beautifully, and um, there's just incredible, incredible collection of souls and humans here. So if you're just new to this community, please, please, please dive on in, uh, share a post, welcome yourself to the community if there's anything that you ever want to share just to let people know who you are. Uh, there's a ton, a ton of incredible, incredible people here. Uh, they're saying echoes back, bro. Okay. All right. So I'll just mute when it's not working. I'm not really sure why that's happening today. Um, and um, yeah, just an incredible opportunity to plug in. Um, something that I've become very, very cognizant of the more we kind of ask people this question and I'm just going to ask it here. So you guys, uh, land with it as well, which is how many of you guys by saying like, yes, or I in the comment box would, would agree that you have done this personal development journey very much on your own. Like you've been this fiercely independent person, You've been reading the books in the comfort of your own home. You've been watching videos. You've been doing things, but it's it's primarily been a me on my own experience as you've been going through this. So, and I'll just wait for it. Yeah. So Travis says I. Um, I'll see how many of you. Yeah. Facebook user. I don't know who that is. They say I too. Um, Christy. Christy. Yeah. So. Yep. Okay, cool. So there's a few of you in there as well that are, are saying, uh, yeah. And and look, I don't want to, I'm not saying this as a uh, make you wrong for anything. We've all done this. I've been just as guilty of it. And I can tell you being on the other side of it, 
you know, the ability to ask for support and more than that, the ability to receive support are two of the greatest gifts that you can give to yourself without question. You can ask anyone that's been in any of our programs for any amount of time, like the most difficult thing for them is to reach out and ask for support, right? Because what comes up is a lot of I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough or I'm not deserving or it's going to make me feel weak inside or whatever it might be. And so um, I just want you to know, like this community that we've built is an incredible resource for you where people legit and I mean like legit want to be there to support and help you and whatever you have to go through to create that reach, right? Like the, the, I want support, uh, just get that. That's a huge part of your personal development journey. And then once, once you can plug in all of our programs at whatever level you do, whether it's, you know, you just come to our live event for a couple of days or you start diving into kind of our, uh, what we're now rebranding as the awareness effect Academy, uh, whether you're at level one, level two, level three, like, it's all about community, reflection, receiving support, asking for support, all that kind of stuff. So um, if you found your way here, I'm really, really happy to have you. I'm sure Guy is as well. And uh, this Tuesday, like every Tuesday, what we do is we just come out here for an hour and we're going to share um, some wisdom and some practices and things that you can start to implement on your journey. And hopefully you don't do those on your own and you can actually start to plug <laughs> into this community and really use it today. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Guy and let him know and he'll share with you what we're actually going to be sharing today. Yeah. So we're going to talk about um, three levels of mind today, uh, kind of t walking you guys through what they are and, uh, you know, ascertain is probably the wrong word because it's not like we're really ascertaining anything. We're, we're more like uncovering ourselves to discover what's underneath, right? So I like to think of transformation not as a um, adding to phenomenon, like you're adding something to yourself. It's actually a subtraction phenomenon. It's like we're actually removing uh, conditioning to come back to and experience our true nature. And so we want to talk about some of, we, we like to uh, embrace both the psychological um, personal development mindset type of work here, as well as what we find to be even more critically important, um, certainly for the times that we're in, the energetic and awareness practices and how we bridge the two. So if you were on last week's call, uh, last Tuesday's call, we actually outlined, you know, these two paths. And that's why if you guys stick around, we, we do roughly give or take the same trainings. It always comes out a little bit different. Um, every month and a half to two months or so. And and there's a purpose for that because there's a, a way that they all tie together into a comprehensive understanding, not just of how your mind works, but like how do you go inside and get a view? Or like how do you, you know, how do you create a view, a level of awareness that allows you to look at oneself in a, in a manner which elicits uh, healing within the system? in a really natural, effortless way, right? Because we we want simple, like, honestly, that's funny. We always say this, everybody wants simple, but the mind is not really built for simple. It likes to complicate, it likes to create lots of rules and regulations. And we kind of see that in our society, right? Like things aren't simple and they have like a lot of rules and regulations. And so people often think that this has to be really, really complicated. And, and it, it's so simple that the mind can not sometimes grasp the simplicity of what it is that we're offering here. Um, and even simplicity still means that you got to cultivate that practice, right? Like, yeah, we always say it's easy to walk. It's, it's simple to walk up a mountain. It's not easy to walk up a mountain. You got to take one step at a time and you're going to get to the top, but is it easy? No, but some people cultivate and they do that practice every day. And for them, you know, measure of walking up the mountain might be fairly, uh, easy experience. And for other people, it's, it's really, really difficult. Right. So we're all kind of in these different places. And so just about these two paths of personal development, like these really two paths toward an awakened human and awakened awareness. Right. And so we have what Ken Wilber has coined the growing up work, which is probably what most of you guys are very familiar with. This is um, 
informational based learning, psychological based learning, mindset principles, integrity, responsibility, right? This is, and what lives in this world is you understand your mind, you understand how it works, you understand the, this device, you even understand many of your patterns, perhaps why they were formed, why you even do the things that you do, but you will notice that when you live in that space, there is this air of uh, like managing yourself. You're like coping with what's happening. It's still happening. You're just managing better. And that's a, that's an important aspect because a lot of people don't have that knowledge, don't have that wisdom. And so they're out of control. They don't know, oh, when I do that, you know, they feel shame or they avoid or feel anxious and they don't know, oh, I could take responsibility for that. I can communicate this nonviolently. I can reestablish connection. They don't, they don't know these practices. They've probably never tried them. And so they've never seen how transformative that could be, right? But that kind of leaves you off with this question of like, well, why is that still happening? when I clearly understand why it's happening and it's still happening, right? Like how come this aspect of me still comes forward? And I'm gonna give it to you guys really straight here and what I believe is the fundamental thing that pretty much every human deals with, if not all humans are dealing with, is really just a, a feeling, this like feeling deeply in our system of a lack of safety. And so if you look across all the bounds of what's happening in humanity and society, you can see that pretty much what everybody is arguing about, what everyone is vying for, what everyone is trying to get to, is this experience of safety and how we've tried to do that, and it's kind of failed, right, is by getting everyone to agree about everything. Because one of the ways that humans test our reality, our personal experiences, well, if they agree on it, it must be true. It's why we gossip, it's why we coalesce, it's why we congregate together, we need to reaffirm our our perception of reality in some way. And so we do this through through our, our agreement, right? And if so, if they agree, it must be true. And this we go on like this for a long time, but it still gives you this very narrow field of what reality is. And so mindset kind of starts opening you up to, well, maybe that wasn't true. What else could be true, right? And And kind of playing with stories and different versions and perceptions of reality. And that's very, very powerful, right? But at the end of the day, you will find that no matter how much you try to convince your mind, right? And we could say, and so let me just kind of insert this here, that the first level of mind that most people are at prior to doing any sort of mindset work, if we were to kind of just bubble it down into a single sentence, their impression of life is, is that they are some kind of a, like some, usually some kind of victim to life and that life is happening to them. And they're almost like this kite just kind of, flying through the wind, you know, at the whim of whatever forces and energies are in the world. And, you know, given the last two years, anybody who's at that at that level of mind, not bad or wrong, right, just a different frequency, uh, has probably had a really, really difficult experience in the last two years, because it's these really big energies, right, that they're getting sucked into. And then uh, we kind of go through our paces with that. So again, the first level of mind that we want to speak to is this level of mind is, what was me? Why is this happening to me? Okay. Once we've established and how many of you guys have kind of been in that place or you feel like you've broken through that, like that's not fundamentally where you live anymore. Just say I in the chat box or you can share any little quips you have about that, you know, like going through that experience. And, and that is that takes something right like that takes courage to detach from that reality. It, it, it takes courage to start listening to the sub vocalization of the mind, right? This little voice inside your mind and starting to listen to it in such a way that you recognize, hey, this little voice in my mind is saying some pretty crazy stuff. And the reason it's saying what it's saying is because it's trying to have you survive and create safety, right? So it's just actually this beautiful mechanism that's trying very, very hard on your part to work hard and, and create, generate the safety for you. It just doesn't really work very well, right? It's this old reptilian mammalian brain that's kind of looking for threat all the time. And then it's like this other part of us, the neocortex, which is more rational and this and that gets hijacked by this part of the brain. And we go into some of these really old, you know, 100 million year old survival patterns that we've gone into. And then we operate from that level of mind, even though we're in the world that has a, you know, kind of a higher mind that we often need. And so once we pop out of that, once you've done enough mindset work, once you've realized, hey, you know what, I, I actually am the spring, I am the the source from which everything in my life uh, gets created from, right? Like how many of you guys are at that point? And from there, this kind of overarching theme is it's no longer happening to me. You can start seeing that life is happening for me, 
Okay, so how many of you guys are like now pretty well established and life is happening for me? Say I yeah, in the chat box there. Okay, is there anything you want to uh, add to this, bro? At least this time? Okay, cool. So, right, so, and that's where we really start saying like, whoa, okay, this stuff is happening for me. There's kind of a lesson in everything that, that's happening. And I'm a willing participant to some degree. And I understand if things are not working, then the best action that I can take, even if it's difficult, even if sometimes I don't believe it to be true, is to look at from the point of view of, you know what, I got to take responsibility for this thing. And I want to tell you that all, I want to give you our definition of responsibility. So because it's not the one that's casually used in society okay, or in, in different cultures. For us, what we have found is that responsibility is often uh, meshed together or collapsed with fault and blame. So like fault, blame, and shame usually fall under the, the category of responsibility. So what does that mean? That if I'm to take responsibility, then I'm to blame. I need to feel shame about what's happening, right? And, and, it's, and it's this collapse that has often uh, led to people declining from or saying, I don't want to take responsibility for that because I don't want to feel this shame. And who can blame anybody for that? Right. Because it's like, why would I want to make myself feel bad by taking responsibility for this thing? Right. But responsibility really means your ability to respond to what's happening. Now, most people, when they're taking responsibility, are really just reactive. Right. We want to get away from the reactive mind and towards the mind that's able to respond with a caveat from an aligned place. And that's where we want to bring the awareness and energetics into it, because it's how do we find that alignment? Because if we don't, we continue come from we continue to come from reactivity. And so responsibility, if you uh, separate it from this fault, blame, shame model, the psychological model that we've used for a very long time, and you just realize that taking responsibility allows for me to more adequately respond to what's happening, and this shame, blame, guilt energy that's over here, I don't have to deal with that at all, or I can process and metabolize that energy through my system, realizing that when I do, I will be empowered to respond better to the situation, okay? And this is really starting to get into this modality and even direct experience with life that it's like, holy crap, like I am the spring from which it all comes through, right? I am, I am a, a channel where the energy moves through and some kind of reality gets generated through my system and I can share that and express that into the world, right? And it's a really, I mean, if that's all you did, if that's all you did in this lifetime, you will be eons ahead of where most people's yeah. psychology is at this point in yeah, time sure. um, in this kind of transition. And you will be able to start manifesting things in your life that most people who are in that more victim mentality just fall prey to and literally don't have access to. Not because they don't want to, they just haven't been shown a path and have not had the direct experiences that allow them to see so far, like what actually happens when you courageously take responsibility for something? What happens when you go into that relationship that's been fucked up for 30 years and you say, hey, you know what? I'm going to take responsibility for this relationship. I'm going to call myself out on the position and perception that I've had. I'm going to shift that and I'm going to tell you and call myself out on what I've held in my system. I'm going to forgive this situation myself and you. And you see this relationship just come back online, vitality returns and like uh, something new can blossom that that person may have never experienced before. It's sporadic. It's spontaneous. It is enlivening. It's an amazing experience. And like, you know, we've led people through those kind of experiences for 15 years. And we can tell you, it doesn't matter. Usually it doesn't matter to what degree a relationship is in disrepair. It can be repaired, right? It, people don't always want repair, to be perfectly honest. It depends on, you know, if both sides are, are at that point. However, most humans want some connection with their loved ones, like a really deep, meaningful, authentic connection, right? And it's like, are you willing to get out of the way Take full responsibility, understanding that when you do, all the things that you want from this relationship will be yours. You will get them, but you got it. But you got to take that really first step, and and honestly, deal with your ego. Like you got to take a little bit of ego hit. Be like, holy shit, I have been holding on to this idea about this person, and as long as I hold on to this idea, nothing new can come of this relationship, right? Nothing new will be born here. Uh, anything you want to add to this part? No, oh, keep finishing the. Yeah. So I want to take you guys through the through the whole piece, right? And so, 
So with the growing up work, and maybe you guys again can map yourself here, here's what ends up happening. Here's what we have observed that happens to, to many of our clients. And again, Elon and I have coached tens of thousands of people over the last 15 years. So it's not like a you know experience that we see one or two people having. It's an experience that we see like 99% of people having, right? So again, how many of you guys have like, you read the books, you watch all the videos, you follow the leaders, right? I saw someone mention Bob Proctor. He just passed away, unfortunately um recently um like how many guys you know read all those things and you do all those things just say just say i okay and if you do here's the next part is like have you noticed that once you do that for a while there is this repetition that starts happening everything kind of starts sounding the same like even when i'm sharing with you right now you're probably like yeah i've heard this before i know i know i'm supposed to take responsibility i'm still challenged by that but i know i'm supposed to do it my life is better when I do, right? Not This is not new. So when you get to that point, and you tell me if this is true, there's like a, an air of frustration that begins to arise in the system. Why? Because you're like, how much work does it take? Like, what do I have to do? What do I need to understand? Is it a concept that I missed? Am I fundamentally broken? Why do I keep doing that thing? Why do I keep having this experience of money comes in, money comes out? Why do I keep meeting the same person and sabotage the relationship? Why is my health in disarray? I want it. I want to be healthy, but I seem to keep, keep making bad choices. Like, why does that happen? And, and that's what we've been sitting with for the last six years. And, you know, because we saw the same frustration. Elon and I had put over a million dollars into our personal education between him and I. 15 years of nonstop work. And even we were like, holy shit, like this is really frustrating. I don't want to look at an originating incident over and over and over and over again. I already know what happened there. I already know what I got angry about. I already know what mom and dad did. I already know all those things. Still still yelling, still upset, still fearful, still fearing terror, all those things, right? And this is kind of where we, we start brushing up against really the ceiling or the walls of what mindset work can do for you. We all know this, like information by itself, unapplied, like it's just information. You, you you might even know, like I've seen people do this. I'm sure you have too. You go out with friends, you know, their life is a shit storm, right? Like things are not going well for them. But at the table, like they can philosophically talk a really good spiritual game. Like they really know their fundamental principles of spirituality. And what they say sounds genius to other people. But you're like, holy crap, that person's life is in disarray. So to me, that there's a misalignment there. It says that the person has information, but they haven't applied it and they haven't gained wisdom. Because wisdom is, is when you've applied information to an experience, you've actually had directly experienced it. We call that gnosis. And you, once you've had gnosis, you've learned something from it. A transformation has occurred. And now you're not talking from information. You're actually generating it from your own experience. Okay? You're actually talking about it from a direct experience that you've had. And there's a different qualitative feel to somebody who speaks that way versus somebody who's giving you information like they read it in the book, memorized it, and, and, have, and have conceptual knowledge, but don't have direct wisdom, okay? And so in order to get into more of the wisdom practices, what we, what we wanna start doing, and this is what our company has really uh, taken the mantle on and why we feel our work is so different, is that we're bridging what's happening in the mindset space and what we can tell you that we have found is no matter how good the psychology or no matter how good the therapy, what we see is that people don't actually heal the rupture until they include energy and awareness into the practice. Okay. If that to you sounds crazy, again, I just want to remind you some of the smartest people on planet Earth, Einstein's, the Nikola Tesla's have for a very, very long time. Quantum physics is now corroborating this have always said that vibration, frequency, you know, um, sound, these kind of things are basically the material building blocks of our reality, of our universe. And so we too are frequency and vibrations, energy, sound, call it what you will. And so if we don't have awareness on energy, we're literally taking awareness off of what we are, which is just energy experiencing energy. Uh, energy vibrating and frequencies vibrating and all these different kind of things, right? And so when we start including that is where some really big magic can happen. And when you transition here, and we'll take you guys through a short exercise today, but when you transition 
into awareness and energy practices, including the foundation that you've set with mindset, because it's really, really important, by the way. We're not taking anything away from mindset. Crucial, crucial, crucial. But when you start including awareness and energy, you're going to start transitioning from somebody who says this is happening for me to this is literally happening through me. Okay? So now it's no longer happening for me. It's like you are a uh, in a co-relationship with source. And you are directly experiencing your channel nature. You are actually opening up your body energetically. Okay, and this is I, I mean this literally, like a flower opening. Okay, the heart opens, the nervous system relaxes, and the energy body can open. And what you're doing is you're essentially just you have more charge that you can carry in your system. Okay, look, you've all we've all met the depressed, sad person. I was one of them as a teenager. That person has a very usually a very tough time carrying charge in their system. Right, uh, and and honestly, it works just like. It just works just like the outlet in your wall. You have a positive and a negative, and you got to put something in between, right? Like a resistance that that takes potential energy and turns it into something. And so you can think of your your conscious mind as the positive, and your subconscious mind, which is really not a mind. It's really this this whole mechanism that we call a nervous system and how it operates, as the negative. And by applying awareness you're harnessing that energy and turning it into something. So it goes from being static to kinetic type of energy, okay? And and this is really it. This is like our positive and our, and our negative. And that doesn't mean good and bad. It means like the polarities which need to be connected, the mind-body connection, the mind-energy connection, in order to take full advantage of what it is that you are authentically, okay? And so the last bit I'll say here, unless, bro, you wanna chime in with anything? I just finished where you want to finish. That's okay. Yeah. So the last thing I just want to say here is like where where most people have a um, – it's not an unrealistic view. It's just what seems to not work, okay? Like because every view is valid, right? Like all these perceptions that we have of everything that's happening, 8 billion views that can be fully validated from that person's point of view. That's actually in, in, my, in my experience the point. Everybody needs to have a different point of view because every person is revealing another aspect of reality to the whole. Right. We get a more holistic view of everything when everyone has different perceptions. So it's weird that we've gotten into this argument about perceptions versus being like, oh, my God, look how they view it. What can I learn from that? Look how they view it. What can I learn from that? What can I extract from that person's experience? We don't feel safe enough to to share it because, you know, the way that the ego is organized right now. But what we really want to get is your mind is not the first thing that's responding to what's happening in front of you. Whatever life circumstance you're dealing with, the mind is actually kind of like it's like step five. OK. What's really responding first is is an energy. It's like it's like frequencies hitting your body like an instrument. And there's a vibration that's happening somewhere in your body. It's very subtle. But through the cultivation of awareness and energy awareness, what is subtle can become actually a, a big part of your life. OK. And so there's a usually a vibration that happens somewhere in the center channel right there and down the chakra systems. And there's like a tightening or a pinching or collapsing, or like it sometimes even feels like a, like a knife, like a stabbing kind of feeling, or like, you know, just something, like some kind of compression. It's a, usually a discomfort. Now, for most of us, we have been trained when there's discomfort in our system that the mind looks away. It's like, uh -uh, I don't want to deal with that. And then mind has learned to run a specific program, right? Think about when you had some kind of trauma as a child, something had to happen to secure and save the child from the experience that was happening. And so your mind tried something, tried to do something, you know, some kind of response. And when it worked, the mind is like, okay, we're gonna keep doing that. So for example, if you were um, dealing with a bully as a young child, like I had to do stuff like that. Um, you know, the first day you get bullied and you're like, why did I just happen? I'm like, what did I do today, right? The next day the bully comes after you again. Now you're like, oh my God, I'm, under direct threat and now i'm fearful of going outside or playing with my friends or whatever it might be third day you're like all right today i'm going to deal with this head on right and you go out there and you you clock the bully and the bully gets up and nails you right back that response didn't work right that just like that was a failed response let's say the the fourth day or the fifth day or whatever you realize that on your own you're like it's scary and so you make sure that this time when you head out to recess, you bring a few friends with you because there's power in numbers. Okay. 
And now, as you walk by the bully, but there's four or five of you walking by, the bully looks, but the bully doesn't respond. Doesn't do anything to you. And you get safety in that moment. And you, and your system looks at it and says, uh-oh, okay, I need to be around people all the time to feel safe. I need to develop relationships. And now you can see as a child, you do that. And then you, you grow up into this experience where like you have to always be around people to create safety, even if what you really want is privacy, even if what you really want is quiet. You know, and maybe uh, on top of that, you start realizing that the way to have people around you all the time is to constantly do things for them, like to just to serve them and to give them. But on the other end, nobody's giving you anything back in return. And so there's this empty feeling in your body of like, what the fuck? Like, why am I always giving people something never getting them back in return? And you can see how this thing that created provided safety in the moment over time can turn into a distortion of reality because it, you're walking outside every day as if that bully for when you were four or five, six years old, is still standing outside waiting to clobber you when that's actually not happening, okay? And so when we get into energy, when we get into awareness, what we start realizing is there's a, there's all these things that your system is constantly responding to. Your nervous system is just automatically responding to stuff all the time. And we want to train our mind to not be as, so subjective because that's where we get in trouble, right? Because we can either view what's happening, and this is what psychology does and why we believe it fails for most people or doesn't work as well as it could, is that you look at what's happening in your system, but you look at it from the conditioning of the mind. This is actually where, this is actually where the response is. So this doesn't have any other perception. So what we wanna train people to do is, how do you unhook? We call this unlocalized awareness. You unlocalize your awareness from the conditioned mind and you actually come out into a different level, higher state mind. This is what we train in our two-day intuitive mind um, program. It's actually rather easy to do. And once you find this seat of awareness, so to speak, then you can look at what the response that's happening in the body. When you do this, something magical happens, okay? And what, what ends up happening is that your body has its own intelligence. Your, your body is very, very highly intelligent. Right? And, and responds very quickly to things. And just the same way that you uh, may get a cut on your finger or break a bone or a woman gets pregnant, there's no feedback that we need to give the body in order to how to bring itself back to homeostasis. It's always trying to move back to home, homeostasis. It's always, always, always trying to do that. Okay, You never look at a cut on your finger and the finger is like, yeah, you do it this time. You figure it out. Right? Like, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to figure it out. What we want to understand is how are we interjecting in that process that's not allowing for the healing to happen? Because whatever trauma you have is really just energy that's bound up and stuck in your body. It's energy that hasn't been able to find a way to metabolize itself, okay? So I want you to get this. You get a, you get a response in your system. Something hits your system. There is a response in here. The mind looks down and goes, I don't like this. This has happened before. Here's how we respond to a situation like this. And then it hijacks you and runs that program. Now, you might understand what I'm saying, but the source, and I'm putting this in quotes, of your issue, because it's not an issue, the source of your issue is that there's a part of you that doesn't feel safe that the mind is responding to. So if you want to stop having that response, you want to actually heal from it, you don't want to figure out what the mind is doing because that's too complicated. And it's not helping you anyway. You're, you're seeing it. Oh, I'm doing that thing again. But so what? You've already done it. What you want to look at is, could we metabolize that energy so that when something hits my system, that pinch, that closing, that you know, push of a knife, that discomfort that's in the system actually doesn't happen anymore? You don't it, like you just you metabolize it, so that response that the body's having, it stops having it, and then the mind can still look down at the system, but there's nothing to respond to in order to create safety because there's literally that that subtle energy is no longer there. The body is just fluid now, that energy easily moves. So even if it upsets you, it's for a moment, like a child, it's like here, it's gone. The body just knows how to metabolize it. It's trained, it, it has that template. It works fluidly with energy. And that's what ends up happening. And this is what our clients are like, wait, what's happening right now? Because instead of having to work so hard on something, which is what mindset development usually is, it's like the more effort you put in, the more you kind of get back until you hit that threshold. With the energy practice, it's actually quite the opposite. If you push on your system and you try to do something, actually very little happens. In fact, almost nothing happens. It, how you elicit this response, how you leverage this intelligence is by becoming subjectively aware. 
Okay, and then I'll say this one last piece and then I'll, I'll roll it to Elon. What we want to help you guys do is understand that most people are pleasure seeking. Okay? And this is causing them a lot of pain. And if you go, if you literally go on our homepage, you will see a line just a little bit down the page that says, stop trying to make yourself feel better and simply get better at feeling. Okay, stop trying to make yourself feel better and simply get better at feeling. When you find this seat of awareness is really where the game of transformation can take off and begin for you. Because what you start noticing is that you stop pleasure seeking and instead of the view itself, right? Just, just watching, regardless of what's on the screen, regardless of what circumstances are in your life, the view is the pleasure. Like you're just getting uh, pleasure from just watching life unfolding in front of you. Okay, and, and I want to tell you that you all have experienced this. You know how I know? Because you've all watched a movie. You've seen horror movies. You've seen scary movies. You've seen rom-coms. You've seen movies that have pulled at your heartstrings. You've seen every kind of movie. And I want you to get that when you watch a movie, you are more of a sub, you have a more of a subjective view because that thing is not happening to you. Right. And so you are acquiring pleasure regardless of what circumstances are unfolding on the screen merely from the fact that you're the one observing what's happening on the screen. But in our lives, it's not like that. In our lives, we are the actor and the producer and the director, and we are intimately experiencing what's happening. So what ha and this is, again, all because we have been trained, trained to localize our awareness here where life is experienced that way. However, the moment, the moment that you can unhook from that, the moment you unhook from that, you then become the observer, just like watching the movie where you are now the subject, watching the object go through the experiences. And so you derive pleasure from just viewing what's happening, regardless of what's happening. And because of that, the nervous system downregulates and goes into a parasympathetic rest and digest response, which is the only response the body can have for real healing to occur. No healing happens. Nothing happens until your body is at rest. And so for a lot of people, when they start meditating, they think this is to quiet my mind instead of realizing this is a healing tool. And that's where we want to transition any of you guys who are interested and want to learn what it is that we're talking about here because it needs to be directly experienced is that it's not about just sitting here and meditating and quieting your mind because your mind is not going to get quiet that way sometimes the mind is not quiet even with all the practice i've had sometimes it has loud days but what we have learned is that it's not about quieting the mind it's about observing the mind in all its glory and all its essence and in all the ways that it shows up sometimes you observe and it's quiet sometimes you observe and the mind is fucking pissed off and it's trying to yank at safety and do all these different things. And that's that's the rub here, guys, is that with simple practices in meditation, you can start making huge advancements in the quality of your life. And start recognizing what's really important here is that the actions that you guys are taking, that you guys have tied to your value in life, are really not important. I mean, they are at some level, right? But like what's the truth is, is that love, connection, and all these things are, are really not contingent on you achieving anything or doing any action at all. We've made it that way, but they're not. And if you can start recognizing this, then you will start understanding that, okay, if I've, if I've been trying to achieve to get all these things and it's not working, this is all in the world that lives outside of myself, trying to change my external circumstances to make myself feel safe in here. That's not working because it doesn't work. Hands down. Again, coach tens of thousands of people at all levels of success and income levels. Like everyone's dealing with this at every level. I don't care what level they're at. And you learn how to turn inside and learn how to view you will train your body, you will train your energe uh, energetics, you will train your awareness to feel safe. And then the quality of the energy from which you act and respond to life completely changes. And so the results that you get are equivalent to the quality of that energy. We all know what it feels like when we're scared and scarce or in a rush and you try to do something, you end up hurting yourself, sabotaging, doing something dumb, and you're like, why did I just do that? versus feeling grounded and safe in the system taking time letting intuition 
come through and responding that way. And then life starts showing up a very different way. And these are the two kind of worlds that we are now beginning to seesaw in of like people who are starting to recognize these higher aspects and different levels of mind and who are training and cultivating themselves to live in that state constantly as Elon and I are and as our students are doing versus those who are struggling with the minutia of every day and every experience that's really just dealing with survival all the time. Yeah. How many of you guys are, uh, would say, and just let me know in the comment box, how many of you guys, there's an issue in your life or a challenge in your life that's been around for at least a year? It could be, you know, a relationship, it could be finances, it could be career, it could be health. How many would you say, like, there's this thing that you've been working on, but it's, it's still here? Okay. And if you guys want to even get more specific and you just want to type in like the area that that's in, uh, as I'm sharing, you can, you can drop that in. I find that to be true. Yeah. Right. And like some people are saying at least two or three. And so here's what I want you to get, right. We took you through kind of like the three levels and I want you to get that when you first start your path and you first start reading the books and watching the videos, do you guys remember how exciting it was whenever you receive this information? Like you felt like life was, was breathed into you or you were unplugged from the matrix. It felt so alive. You had aha after aha and you're like, oh my God, that's why I've been such an asshole in relationships. And <laughs> that's why money hasn't showed up in my life and all of this kind of stuff. And it's, it's really, really exciting. And you, you start to make some pretty big shifts in that first level transition where you switch out of this, woe is me, life is happening to me, to life is happening for me, right? Like we start to take responsibility and we start to make all these shifts in our lives. Now I asked you before, like how many of you have a, a situation that you've been dealing with for more than a year? And the reason I asked that is this, and you know what, Let's before I even give you the answer, let's play word association. So you guys like, you guys get that you're all on the same page, right? I'm going to say a sentence. You tell me what the word is. What you resist, blank. Fill in the blank. What you resist, what? There you go. Persists. Look at all these people. Persist, 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 right? Okay, so we all know that, right? What you focus on does what? I'm gonna tell you guys what you win at the end of this lovely game. What you focus on does what? Blank. Yeah, grows, gets bigger, gets bigger yeah. grows, right? Like we, we all know this, what you focus on expands, it grows, right? So look, you guys all know this. Why do you know this? Because you've probably read this or heard this in at least, at least 50 different books or videos. Would you guys agree? Like I'm not giving you any, anything new that you haven't heard. And you know this, you have this information. And with that information, you also have dozens of other things that you've learned about how you make up stories and how the mind make up stories and how if you shift your stories, all of a sudden you have this whole life. But here's the rub. At some point on your journey, hasn't knowing all this stuff, like whereas before it was creating all these massive ahas and like really shifting your life, hasn't it over time the returns of it diminished, like the usefulness of it. And you start to highlight and see different layers that are wanting something, but you're using these tools that you used before and created amazing results for yourself in your life. But now, how many would you agree? Like it's not working in quite the same way that it used to. How does that make you feel? And I'm not going to say it. I want you guys to type out like B 
Be honest. How does it make you feel that you have invested all of this time, all this money, all this energy, and you're still dealing with the same thing? Still dealing with your finances, still dealing with your relationships, still dealing with your career. And I just want you guys to read this because people are putting in one word and I would venture to say that most of you have all these similar things. Frustrated, tired, weak, lost, discouraged, duped. Oh, that's a good one. Right? Feeling deflated, frustrated, discouraged. Frustrated, stressed. Angry, disheartened. How many of you guys can resonate with every single thing here that someone wrote? Like, even though you didn't write that, like, you can feel that. And I'm going to let you off the hook here and just let you know, like, you haven't done anything wrong. This is just what happens in the journey. Level one, you're like peaking. Everything is making a difference. It's like skyrocketing growth, skyrocketing growth. And then you get to this place where it like tips over and it, the growth starts to slow down. And the growth starts to slow down and it's not quite working how it used to. And then you even start to decline. And you start to decline because of all of these things, right? Like that feeling of being duped or frustrated or angry. And what are you doing in this state? Check in for yourself. Like, what do you do when all of this, it's like, it's not quite working like it used to. What do you do? My guess is because you are a seeker and you are an old soul, is you have a nagging feeling inside that there has to be some other way. There has to be something I'm missing. And yes, you go into old patterns. And for most of us, we either give up, like Caroline says, or we double down and we do what? More reading, more meditation, more videos, more this, more that, because something inside is nagging at you and telling you, you know what? I know I'm just missing that one answer. I know I'm missing that thing. And if I just work hard enough, and if I just push and keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing, I know I'm gonna find it. How many of you guys would say that you find yourself very, very, very much in that state? Yeah, someone even said, try differently and or harder. Look for more tools. Right? We just like keep, keep, keep going, keep going. I know, I know, I know, I'll get it there, I'll get it, right? I wrote a post earlier today, okay, which I shared my story of this. And I want you guys to know that after being on that path for probably about 14, 15 years, and maybe I'm just slow and maybe I'm just stupid, but I've also coached tens of thousands of people. So I would say that I have enough data. It's not peer reviewed people. It's not peer reviewed, right? It's anecdotal, but it's enough data to let you know that it doesn't work. That reading more and watching more and all that stuff that you've been doing, if you have a problem that has been nagging you for more than a year and it's still there, then I'm going to just let you know and let you off the hook that doing more of what you're already doing is not going to be the thing that solves the problem. How many of you just heard that? And you can honestly say there's like a massive bomb of disappointment and upset that just hit your system. It's like, fuck. I get it. Like what I just shared, it's not something that your mind or your body really, really wants to hear. But honestly, like, I'm not talking to that part. I want to talk to the higher soul self, you. The one that knows that you're here for a reason. The one that knows that you've been trying all these things and it's exhausting. And yes, there is another way. And no, it's not where you've been looking. 
it's not in reading more. It's not in meditating more. I mean, maybe doing the right meditation, but it's not in any of that. So if you want to start growing like this again, right? So we grew like this in the beginning, then now we're in this tapering off. And before you give up, here's what I want to offer you. Once you shift into what Guy was talking about and you begin to relate to life happening through me versus life happening for me, right? You got to life happening for me. Amazing. It created awesome results. And if those results are tapering off, then I'm telling you, you can spend the next one to 50 years running against that wall over and over. It took me 14, 15 years. I beg you, you don't have to do the same thing. It took me to the point of absolute frustration and wanting to give up and throwing everything out after 15 years of invested time, money, and energy to fully surrender to that just because those tools were awesome and are awesome, they're not the ultimate tools. They're just a set of tools that work for certain things and don't work for other things. And that's what springed this entire inquiry that Guy and I have been on for the last five, six years. This journey to actually figure out, I'm no longer interested in how to manage my anger or manage my disappointment or manage my sadness or alone or unworthiness or any of that stuff. I'm no longer in, interested in trying to figure out new stories to tell my mind so that it can get excited and move through life. I'm not interested. I'm interested in finding ways to look within and notice the parts inside that trigger the chain reaction of all those patterns. By the way, your necessity to always learn and progress and read and all that stuff, I know it's an amazing gift. It doesn't come from a safe, grounded place. It comes because your system doesn't feel safe when it doesn't know. It created this strategy to try to make you feel better. So it just goes out. It's like, let me get more information. And then the brain goes, ah, oh, okay, we're okay. And that lasts for a whole minute or two or a day or whatever it is. And then it's like, no, 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 I need to find out more. I need to find out more, right? And you're, again, back on that hamster wheel. You found your way into this community, I'm telling you. Because at some level, maybe your mind can't hear this just yet, but at some level, your soul is done with that. Not like, not like done, throw it out. I'm saying like, it knows how to use that stuff. You throwing more at it. Like I, I worked with a doctor and he was like, you know, if, if you do a lab and someone tells you you're B12 deficient, what would a normal doctor tell you? if you're B12 deficient or iron deficient or whatever it is, right? They would tell you what? Go get a B12 supplement or go get an iron supplement and take more. And this is what we do, right? Now check this out. If your system, if the body is not able, because we get B12 from food and all the things that we you know, live, eat, and drink. If your body can't create and move B12 or whatever supplement in through your system, it's like there's a broken fan inside the, the engine, right? That is already overworked because it can't figure out why it's not creating it. And you're like, I'm just gonna throw more of this stuff at it that it doesn't know how to process or deal with. And now it's just spinning even faster. Effective? Not so effective. Wouldn't you be much better off to actually look inside and go, why is this thing spinning and not able to create that on its own inside? When you do that, what you do is you bring your body into homeostasis. And when the body's in homeostasis, it can relax. And in that relaxed state, like I mentioned, all this stuff gets released. 
naturally and effortly gets released without you having to work so damn hard at it. We have people that sit with us at our live events or in our courses, jaw dropped at what starts to move through their body when they actually allow it to move. When the mind doesn't come in and grab and go, no, 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 this can't be good. We need to figure out how to solve this. Like that moves out of the way. And this benevolent energy, this field just allows for that clearing to happen. And with that, all the problems that you are currently dealing with that have been there for more than a year, again, it's not because you're doing anything wrong. It's just you're using the wrong tool for the job. Someone told me, he's like, someone created a Phillips screwdriver for a reason, (laughs) right? Like if you're trying to build a house and all you have is a hammer and nails, not going to be the greatest house, right? Like. You can build something, different tools for different jobs. So what I want to invite you guys, if you're feeling stuck in that level two phase, be open to trying something new that maybe in the beginning will seem foreign or you'll feel like an idiot doing it or whatever it is. And just know, because we've done the same, we've been on the same path and the same journey, like We've been exactly where you're at in that same exact struggle bus. Don't do what we did. Don't do what we did. Like look, look within and ask yourself, if I kept going on this path that I'm on right now, do I really believe that I'm going to end up having this challenge solved or figured out or whatever it is? Because if I've been doing this for the same year or two or three, like if you were on a diet and you wanted to lose weight and you were on this diet for a year and you didn't lose a pound, would you be like, I'm going to double down on this diet. This is, I know this is going to be my year. You'd be like, fuck that. That doesn't work for me. I'm going to go try something new. But there's something about, like you can watch it with governments now, right? Like there's something about admitting that something that you tried didn't quite work. And it doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means at this moment in time, it isn't the thing that is working for you now. It doesn't mean that you chose wrong. It doesn't mean any of that. You needed to go through that to be here. What you do from here is your choice. And it is a very important one. Don't waste more time. If you truly do not want to waste more time, get in touch with someone on our team. Share with them where you're at. Share what's been happening, what you've tried, why you're stuck, why it didn't work. I can promise you that what is on offer here through this community, through the coaching, through the team, will give you simple, practical tools that can shift any area of life and do it quickly. And that's my promise. And if we don't honor that promise, I I can guarantee you, like, whatever you invest with us, you'll get back. Like, we just know this shit works. You know, guy says this all the time, like, when you watch testimonials and most people will tell you, like, these results are not typical, These are typical results. Mm -hmm. Every single one that you see, we have hundreds more typical results. And it doesn't matter how, there is no law of diminishing returns on this work. And that's why we're so excited and passionate about it because I tried everything else and everything that I tried, every supplement, every workout, everything has a diminishing returns. This is the first thing in my life that I found does not. The longer you do it, the better the results become. The more alive you feel, the more connected you feel, the more in love you feel, the more peace you feel, the more grounded you feel. It's like, it just keeps growing. So if you want on that bus, type contact me in the group right now. And I promise someone will reach out to you quickly. They'll maybe even get on a quick call with you and just find out if this is something that you want to do.
Um, we do have a live event coming in the next couple of weeks, March 5th and 6th. That might be an amazing place for you guys to start if this is new to you. But again, like if we can save you time, energy, and money, please do yourself a favor and get off that struggle bus because you do not have to be there. All right, my friends. So again, contact me in the, in the comments here below. We will reach out to you. We look forward to having you uh, in our programs. We look forward to seeing you in our groups. Please share, ask any questions that you're called to uh, in the group as well. And uh, keep showing up to these Tuesdays. We love you guys. Love you guys. Thanks for your awareness. Have an amazing rest of your day. We'll see you next time. Bye, Bye. folks.